hello to my friends at Dyersburg Primary School. My name is Vanessa Kane. I'm the children's director here at MacGyver Sprint Public Library, and I'm here today to read to you the book, The Bug Girl, A True Story. This book goes along with your unit, Awesome Animals, Creepy Crawly Insects. This book was written by the bug girl herself, Sophia Spencer. Sophia had a little help from Margaret McNamara. They both wrote the story, so they are the authors. So she's the bug girl and the author, which means they wrote the words to the story. It's illustrated by Kariscoat. That's a pretty neat name, isn't it? Kariscoat. And Kariscoat is the illustrator, so she drew these wonderful pictures, and there's a lot of detail in these pictures. We're going to have a lot of fun watching, reading these today. This is a Junior Library Guild selection book, and it's published by Swartz and Wade Books in New York. And there's another picture, the bug girl. What do you think that means? Do you think that means she's part bug? It says it's a true story. Let's see what happens, okay? The first time I made friends with a bug, I was two and a half years old. My mom took me to a butterfly conservatory, which is like a zoo for butterflies. As soon as we got there, a butterfly perched on my shoulder. It flitted into my hand and my foot and my elbow and my head and even my nose. It stayed with me the whole time we were there. And there is Sophia and her very first bug friend, the butterfly on her nose. And this little child right here is saying, she's a butterfly magnet. And there's a little child over here. See all those beautiful flowers and bugs and butterflies on the flowers. And in the middle, there's a, somebody saying, can I try? They want to try to be a bug magnet too. Have you ever been a bug magnet? When it's time to go home, a guard stopped us at the door. I'm sorry, he miss. I'm sorry, miss, he said. The butterfly has to stay here. And there is the guard saying, uh-oh, can't take the butterfly home with you. Say goodbye to the butterfly, said my mom, but it did not move. And there is the mom and Sophia and the guard. Carefully, gently, the guard took the butterfly from my shoulder, and after a moment, away it flew. Bye-bye, butterfly, I said. You see the butterfly flying back to all those flowers? Can you say, bye-bye, butterfly? From that day on, I was bug crazy. Other kids like storybooks. I liked bug books. Other kids watched cat videos. I watched bug videos over and over and over. And there is... Sophia and her mama and look at they're reading a book just like we are with a bug in it and look at all the books on the floor can you see the books on the floor they're everywhere and they are all about bugs Sophia likes bugs what do you like to read about what is your favorite thing to read about do you like to read about trains do you like to read about dinosaurs do you like to read about um, superheroes what's your favorite thing to read about I notice bugs everywhere I went and there she is see her big crowd it like, looks like it's some a lot of fun over there but what is Sophia looking at oh she found some bugs on the ground and there she is in her swing but what does she notice in the swing Ooh, looks like a spider and there she's at the store but what does she notice at the store a bug on the counter and oh there's a wonderful dog to play with, but what does Sophia notice? A flea jumping off the, the dog. By the time I turned five, I knew a lot about bugs. There are billions of bugs on the planet. Bugs have been on Earth way longer than humans have. They live on every continent, even Antarctica. One way or another, most plants and animals rely on a bug to survive. The scientific name for bugs is arthropods, but I call them bugs for short. In kindergarten, nobody minded that I loved bugs. Awesome! Cool! Wow! She said prehistoric dragonflies were as big as seagulls. Cool! Wow! Awesome! When you tell somebody a fact at school, do they like it when you tell them a fact? They like it when Sophia tells them about bugs. When the other kids in my class started a karaoke club, I started a bug hunter club. 
Every weekend, my friends and I took our bug buckets and nets and magnifying glasses out to the stream near my house. Would you like to start a bug club? Bug finding club? We collected fireflies and we watched them glow. We identified beetles by their two sets of hidden wings and counted the spots on ladybugs. We watched dragonflies hover like helicopters. We even collected stink bugs, which can really stink. Look at her friends and her having a fun day, looking at bugs and learning about them. That's a pretty fun day, isn't it? I took the bugs home to study them. Mostly, I had to keep them out on the porch so they wouldn't escape and crawl around the house. It's just mom and me at the house, so we share chores. Mom has lots of rules. Make your bed. Pick up your clothes, keep your room neat, and no ants in the house unless they're in an ant farm. <laughs> so she can't bring her ants into the house if they're not tucked away in an ant farm. See the ant farm? That's an ant farm right there. You can see down into the, it's in a plastic container where you can see the glass, see through it like glass, and then you can see the ants down in there in the dirt, in their little tunnels. I have just one rule. All bugs must live. If there's a mosquito buzzing, I snatch it up in a napkin and let it go. We don't have a fly swatter. We have a fly net. And there she is, catching a mosquito and letting it go. One night, my mom saw a water bug. That is a giant flying roach in the middle of the living room. She knew the bug rule was important to me, so she didn't kill it. She put a net over it and waited, it, waited for me to find it in the morning. But when I lifted up the net, it was gone. Oh my goodness, would you want to put a net on top of a giant flying roach? Ooh. I wouldn't want to. When I got to first grade, everything changed. Nobody wanted to hear about bugs. Nobody thought bug facts were cool. At first, I didn't mind. Bug scientists are called entomologists. Show off. Instead of saying, cool, awesome, wow, he said, show off. She's not being a show off, is she? And there she's wearing her shirt with a bug on it, and it says, why are you wearing that? Sometimes friends don't say very nice things. They're not being very nice friends, are they? Then I brought a grasshopper to school. I thought the kids would be so amazed by the grasshopper that they'd want to know all about it, but they didn't. A bunch of kids crowded around me and made fun of me. Sophia's being weird again, they said. Ew, gross, said another. Get rid of it. They, then they knocked that beautiful grasshopper off my shoulder and stomped on it until it was dead. That was definitely not being a good friend. Not a good friend to Sophia and not a good friend to the grasshopper. That night, I went home and I cried and cried. Those kids are wrong, my mom said. It's okay to love bugs, Sophia. I know, I said. It just doesn't feel like it. There's her mom. She's making her feel better. Let's look at her room. Look at all the bug things in her room. Look, it looks like she has a ladybug bed and ladybugs on her blankets and pillows and pictures all on the walls. <gasps> There's some bugs in cages right there, some butterfly pictures. I see lots of bugs. I see bug stuffed animals. What else do we see that are bug things in her room? What can you see? I see some more things over here where she's drawing bugs and there might be a bug in that little container right there because it has holes in the top. And there's her a bug catching net. She has got a lot of bugs. I had to go back to school but I didn't bring a bug with me ever again. That didn't stop the kids from making fun of me. They're there on the playground. Can you find Sophia? Oh, there's Sophia. She's by herself on the, on the bench. It says, why doesn't she like regular things? I don't want to be friends with a bug lover. She is so strange. Sophia's not strange, is she? That's why when we're friends with people, we should definitely support them and be nice to them. We shouldn't make them sit alone on a bench and say we don't want to be friends with them because of something they like. That's 
not being a good friend. I'm so glad y'all already know that. I know you already know that. About halfway through first grade, I took a break from bugs. Oh, now look at her room. Mm, even her sheets and her blanket, she took them off. Everything's off the walls. Look at all the boxes of things that had bugs in them. What about Mama? Does she look happy about that? She doesn't look happy about that, does she? Let's find out what else happens. I may have to lick my finger. I can't get the page. My mom did not like seeing me so unhappy. Not one bit. She knew I needed to find other people who loved bugs as much as I did. She wrote an email to a group of entomologists asking for one of them to be my bug pal. She wanted me to hear from an expert that it was not weird or strange to love bugs and insects. Maybe somebody will write back, my mom said. Do you remember what an entomologist is? Somebody who studies bugs. Maybe, I said. Or at least a call. We thought those scientists would be too busy to respond. There's her mom. I like how her mom's taking care of her. But three days later, my mom got an email. She opened it. It's from a bug scientist named Morgan Jackson, she said. He wants to put my letter online so that other entomologists can read about you, okay? Okay, I said. There's the mom. There's mom and Sophia. Morgan Jackson posted my mom's letter, and he asked other bug scientists all around the world to let me know if they had any advice for a girl who loved bugs. Do you think that they had any advice? What do you think? Did they say, oh, Sophia's so weird. She likes bugs. I don't want to be her friend. No, they were good friends, weren't they? They said, oh, my goodness, Sophia. Let's see what they said to her. Two days after that, messages and posts and videos poured in. I couldn't believe how many people around the world loved bugs as much as I did and how many of them were grown-up women. Some were scientists who wrote about the work they do in their labs. Others shared videos of themselves with bugs on their arms and sent pictures of themselves hunting bugs in the wild. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I got a tickle. <coughs> sorry. Ooh. There's all those scientists. Isn't that wonderful? <coughs> I looked at those messages day after day. All these people love bugs, I said to my mom. They do, she said. And they're not weird. Nope, said my mom. They're curious, just like you. I still have a little bit of a tickle. <laughs> Newspaper reporters read my story online, and they started calling my mom to find out more. The reporters asked to interview me, and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and I even appeared on television, which was a bit scary. It's hard to be on television when you are just an ordinary person, but I did it. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay to love bugs. Would you like to be on television? Then Morgan Jackson decided to write a scientific article about how entomologists can get young people excited about science. Morgan asked if I would like to help write the article. I said, yes. That's how she became a writer. So now she's a writer and a bug girl. School got a lot easier after that because I didn't feel so alone. And nowadays, I like even more things. Gymnastics, time travel books, swimming, and technology. These are the other things that she likes to do. Oh, look at that. And there she is reading a time travel book. And there she is swimming. And there she is learning about technology. There's some technology. My phone buzzed, didn't it? But not too long ago, when somebody asked me to describe myself in three words, I said, the bug girl. That's because I'm the happiest when it's just me, a few green leaves, some drops of water, and a bug to keep me company. And there she is. We all have to be comfortable with who we are, don't we? We have to be comfortable with the things that we love. I'm so sorry I didn't make it quiet. <laughs> to be so comfortable with the things that we love and just being ourselves and when we see somebody else who's comfortable with themselves or maybe even a little uncomfortable about sharing something that they love we should be a good friend shouldn't we and we should always say 
that is so cool. I'm so glad that you love that. I don't have to love bugs if you love bugs, but I don't need to be mean to you if, if I don't, right? I'm glad y'all already know that. In the back of her book, Sophia put more bug facts. Look at all the bug facts she's got. She's got things about ladybugs. Yep, things about bees and who studies bugs and super cool bug facts and some dragonflies and some walking sticks. What the biggest bug, bug is. What her favorite bugs are. There's the butterfly. That's what started the whole thing, wasn't it? little bit about ants, life cycle of the butterfly. So you could get this book and you would even find out all about Sophia and her journey to become the bug girl and not be worried about it. And then you can also find out more information about bugs. Isn't that cool? I like creepy crawly insect books. I'm not a big fan of bugs in person. I'll be honest. But I'm really glad that Sophia is. And I'm really glad that Sophia shared her story with us. And I'm really glad that I got to see you today. So I hope you have a wonderful day. You're really good for your teachers. And I want you to think about what you love. How would you describe yourself in three words? I would call myself the reader girl. Because I get to read to you. I will see you later, okay? Have a good day.